What's going on everyone? In today's video I'm going to walk you through my current setup, a budget friendly system that will serve as a media and game server. Now this PC technically doesn't meet the official requirements for Windows 11 but we're going to install it anyway and it works just fine. Once we got the OS up and running we'll dive into setting up Jellyfin for our media needs. Then we'll use Cloudflare Tunnel to assign a subdomain to our internal IP making it easy to access remotely. After that, we're setting up Tailscale for secure VPN access across all my devices and I'll also throw in Parsec and Apollo, which I'll be using strictly for remote access to this machine. Now, this will not be a full step-by-step -step tutorial, but if you want a dedicated Jellyfin setup guide, let me know down in the comments. I'll be happy to make that happen. This build is all about efficiency, media streaming powered by Jellyfin, plus game storage and access with Retrom. Now this build is running an Asus H97ME motherboard paired with an Intel Core i7-4790 CPU, still a solid performer for tasks like this, got a 32GB of DDR3 RAM which is plenty for running Jellyfin and handling multiple connections, for graphics I'm using a GTX 1066GB of VRAM, more than enough for media streaming and some light gaming or emulation if needed. As for storage we got two 4TB hard drives dedicated for our media library, one 2TB hard drive to store our games and a 237GB SSD where Windows 11 will be installed. To get ready for this Windows 11 install, we're gonna use Rufus and the regular USB stick, 8 or 16 gigs is more than enough. Just search for Rufus, download and install it. Once Rufus is open, click on select, choose your Windows 11 ISO file and make sure you have your USB drive plugged into your PC. When you're ready, just click on start, a message will pop up letting you know that some requirements will be bypassed, like 4 gigs of RAM, secure boot and TPM 2.0. Once you confirm everything, click OK and after a few minutes your bootable Windows 11 will be ready to go. So without further delay, let's jump right into Windows 11 installation. You will see the reason for this step in just a second. It's a simple error fix that might pop up or you might not encounter it at all. In my case it did show up so I'll walk you through it. We're just following the normal Windows setup here. Now when I selected the target drive, the 237 gigs SSD, after clicking to create a new partition I run into a small error. To fix this error, head back right after you accepted the Windows terms and conditions or restart the whole process again. Press Shift F10 to open a command prompt then type Disk part, select this zero or whichever number matches your drive, clean and finally convert GPT. Now that we clean and converted the drive, we can go ahead and create a new partition. Just click next to start the Windows 11 installation. From here Windows will handle all the setup automatically. We're gonna skip ahead a bit because this part takes a little while to complete. So here we are with the fresh installation of Windows 11 up and running. This is the same PC we started with, just upgraded and ready to go. I've already gone ahead and completed all the Windows updates, so everything is up to date and running nice and smooth. Overall, the system feels really snappy, even though it's running on all the hardware. And without further delay, let's open up a fresh Chrome page and get ready for the next steps. To get started with Jellyfin, just head over to their official website, jellyfin.org. Everything you need is right there, download, setup, guides, and even a live demo at the bottom of the page so you can see how it works before installing. To download Jellyfin, head over to download tab on jellyfin.org, then click on server. Since we're using Windows, we'll scroll down and select the Windows AMD 64 option, then click on Windows 64-bit EXE installer. Once that's downloaded, right click on the file and choose run as administrator. This will launch the Jellyfin setup wizard. For most users, I do recommend going with the basic installation. Just leave everything as default settings and click next through the prompts. Once Jellyfin finishes installing, it will automatically open up in your browser and take you straight to the initial setup wizard. This is a real simple step-by-step -step process to get your server up and running. The first thing you'll do is to select your preferred language, just choose the one that works best for you and click next to continue. After that, you'll need to create your admin user. This will be your main login account for Jellyfin, so go ahead and set up a an user and a strong password. You'll use these credentials to log into your dashboard and manage your media, so make sure it's something secure and easy for you to remember. 
Next up, Jellyfin will prompt you to add the media library. So this is where you can point Jellyfin to your movies, TV shows, music, or other folders. Now you can set up your libraries right here, but I personally like to skip this step for now. That's because I prefer to get the base system ready first and then fine-tune everything through the dashboard, especially after installing some useful plugins. Speaking of plugins, I'll leave a small list in the video description to my custom Jellyfin repository, along with a quick note on what each one does. This makes it easier for you to add them to your Jellyfin setup. This is in the case you decide to set up Jellyfin. Once you through the wizard, just hit finish and that's it. You'll land in your Jellyfin dashboard and you're ready to start customizing. Now to start customizing your Jellyfin experience, you'll want to head over to the catalog section inside the dashboard. You can find on the left hand menu under plugins. Just click on catalog, you'll see a list of available plugins and community tools that can add new features or improve how your server works. From here, simply choose the plugins you want, click install and they'll be added to your server. Keep in mind, after installing any plugins, you'll need to restart your Jellyfin server for the changes to take effect. Now that we got everything set up the way we like it, it's time to start adding our media. To do this, head over to your Jellyfin dashboard and look for the tab on the left hand side that says library. Click on that and then hit add media library. This is where you'll begin organizing your content. We'll start with movies. First choose movies as your content type from the drop down list, then click folders to tell Jellyfin where your movies are and actually stored on your system. In my case, I got my movie collection up in drive D, so we'll browse to that location and select the appropriate folder. You can do the same, just make sure it's the exact path where your video files are located. Now before we save, we're going to tweak a few settings to make the things cleaner and more organized. Enable automatically add to collection, this helps group related content together nicely. In the metadata section, choose the order of your preferred metadata providers, you can drag to reorder if needed. Make sure save artwork and metadata into media folders is checked, this keeps all the info local and portable. Next head down to the subtitle section, choose your preferred subtitle language and again check the box to save subtitles into media folders, super useful for keeping things tidy, especially across devices. Now once everything looks good just click OK and Jellyfin will begin scanning your library and pulling all the data from the, your media. Now that we added our movie library, let's do the same for TV shows. Click on add media library again and this time choose TV shows from the list. For the name I'm calling mine TV shows but you can call it whatever you want. Then find the folder where your TV shows are saved, for me that's on drive E. We'll change a few settings here too, pick your language, choose the data sources you want, Jellyfin to use and check that everything looks right. Once you're done hit OK and Jellyfin will start adding your shows to the library. And finally here we are, once we added all our media, Jellyfin will take a bit of time to scan through your files. It pulls in all the information needs like titles, cover art, metadata and even trailers and episode descriptions, depending on your settings. Just give it a few minutes to finish indexing everything. Once it's done, your dashboard should start filling up and you'll see your movies, TV shows and collection appear nicely organized. Now you can go ahead and make a few final tweaks to how things are displayed. Personally, I like to sort my libraries in descending order, so the most recently added movie or show shows up first, that way I don't have to scroll down too far to find the latest content I have added. To do this, just head into the section like movies or TV show, click on sort options at the top and choose date added descending. This keeps everything fresh up and front. Overall, everything looks clean and well organized, the whole interface is smooth, the layout is intuitive and the whole system feels snappy even on all the hardware. And just like that, we got our own very personal media server up and running with Jellyfin. Alright, so this video is getting a bit long and we already covered a lot, from setting up Windows 11 to getting Jellyfin installed and adding all our media. So I'm going to wrap up part 1 here. In the next video we'll take this setup further, I'll show you how to link a custom subdomain using Cloudflare Tunnel, set up Tailscale for secure access and install Parsec and Apollo for remote control. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel if you found this helpful. Until next time, thanks for watching.